the U.S. District Judge uh, William J. Haynes. And of course, Judge Haynes, uh, before we uh, end the show for today, let's give you an opportunity to uh, talk about some practical uh, aspects of mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, judicial system. Uh, since uh, May the 17th uh, was uh, uh, recently passed, uh, we do know that the uh, 17th of May of 1954 represented one of the most important decisions of Brown versus the Board of Education at Topeka, Kansas. And quite a while ago, we had you on a panel Mm -hmm. of individuals to talk about the uh, decision of 1954. Let's uh, give you an opportunity to talk about some of the other aspects of the Constitution and uh, race relations during this last uh, uh, five minutes that we have here. Well, race has been a factor in the Constitution since it was formed. Uh, during the debates leading to the, in, to the um, formation of the Constitution. Uh, the issue of how to count slaves mm -hmm. for determination of representation in the Congress was a hotly debated issue among the constitutional delegates. Mm -hmm. In addition, there were other aspects of the Constitution, mm -hmm. for example, on taxing mm -hmm. the migration of slaves, mm -hmm. of, of persons uh, that was a part of mm -hmm. the constitutional mm -hmm. uh, debate. Mm -hmm. The original constitutional debate also discussed that slave, the Congress would not have the authority to end slavery mm -hmm. for another 20 years or more after mm -hmm. the Constitution was, was enacted. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, there was a provision in the Constitution that if a, basically said that if a slave mm -hmm. escaped to another state, that mm -hmm. that state mm -hmm. would honor the original state's authority over that slave mm -hmm. and return it. Uh, of course, there are several stages to the issue mm -hmm. of race in the Constitution. The late Leon Higginbotham, yes, who was a judge of the Third Circuit Court of Appeals mm -hmm. and in the final years taught at Harvard and was a federal mm -hmm. uh, member of the Federal Trade Commission, mm -hmm. did a wonderful uh, book on the different stages. Mm -hmm. That stage I just referred to was among the first. Uh, the mm -hmm. second stage, significant stage, of course, involved the reformation mm -hmm. um, of the Constitution with the addition of the 13th, 14th, 15th mm -hmm. Amendments mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the Civil War that were designed to give rights to the slaves who mm -hmm. had been freed by the Civil War. The next significant uh, development in terms of the Constitution was um, really a, a function of the um, political process mm -hmm. um, of a compromise arising out of a presidential election where federal troops were mm -hmm. removed and states basically had the authority to enact Jim Crow laws mm -hmm. that resulted in um, the resegregation uh, of the South mm -hmm. by law mm -hmm. uh, and the Brown decision reflected the beginning of the fourth era yeah. mm -hmm. where rights of uh, African Americans and black citizens were being restored mm -hmm. to an equal basis with other citizens mm -hmm. of the community. So Brown was a extremely significant yeah. mm -hmm. decision under, uh, under the Constitution, but also I think as a um, stimulant, if you mm -hmm. will, for other social and legal changes that mm -hmm. occurred uh, in mm -hmm. the country. It was a monumental moment mm -hmm. in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, would, uh, you would say that the Brown decision of 1954 probably uh, represents the uh, epitome in terms of what the Constitution has said in reference to race. Would that be a correct statement? I think Brown represented the reaffirmation mm -hmm. of the basic concept mm -hmm. of the Constitution mm -hmm. that all persons are created equal. Mm -hmm with the opportunity to pursue mm -hmm. happiness and to enjoy mm -hmm. the same legal rights mm -hmm. as other citizens. Mm -hmm. And it provided the legal basis yeah. mm -hmm. to make that principle mm -hmm. a reality. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and, and of course, uh, Judge, we've got about a minute and 44 seconds, and I wouldn't want to uh, raise this question to give you a minute and 44 seconds, but uh, where are we going from here in terms of race and the Constitution? Do you think that uh, uh, the uh, final statement has been made by the court in reference to this? Well, the issue of race has been an ongoing uh, debate in the country mm -hmm. at large. 
and also under the Constitution. And I suspect that that debate will go on mm -hmm. for a while. And I think as one um, justice of the Supreme Court said, mm -hmm. people often ask what's the law, the better question or what are the facts. Mm -hmm. Once the facts become clear, then the law becomes clear, mm -hmm. much like the leaves of the tree turn toward the sun. Mm -hmm. So as the American society evolves, as the facts change, mm -hmm. The law mm -hmm. normally reflects the realities of the moment. And to accommodate those changes. Consistent with the principles mm -hmm. of the Constitution. Very good. Cons very good. And of course, uh, Judge, uh, let me thank you for coming by over the last uh, half minute that we have here for giving us that excellent information because that's what we were concerned about. We were concerned that uh, there's uh, a misunderstanding of uh, exactly what the federal court system is all about and judicial appointments and whatever. And uh, we recognize that uh, you represent uh, that uh, status of within the court system where uh, 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 when they start looking for individuals and collecting names for those ultimate appointments to the United States Supreme Court that uh, your name probably falls within that uh, range. I know you would like to deny that as we oh, uh, I do end, deny the show, it. <laughs> end the show for today, <laughs> but let us thank you for coming by and giving us that excellent information. Let me encourage our audience okay. to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.